Hello and welcome to Let's Play Silent Hunter 4 Bastards of the Pacific. Uh, this is, for me, the definitive um, <coughs> version of Silent Hunter. Uh, obviously it's a submarine sim. I am terrible at it, but we're going to do a career anyway. Uh, Naval Command can call me Zero. Uh, we will start in 1941 at Pearl Harbor. Uh, we'll have... I can't remember if it's the Porpoise or the Gar class is the weakest. We'll go for Gar. And actually... Hmm. What does the Asiatic fleet have? Let's stay with Pearl Harbor. And yeah. So. We have been approved for command of USS Gudgeon. That's a terrible name. Uh, based out of Pearl Harbor. So, let's begin our tour of duty. Gentlemen, as you already know, we are at war. I quote the President of the United States. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The attack has effectively eliminated our entire battleship force for the time being. As a consolation, it has failed to catch any of our aircraft carriers in port, while the submarines and fuel reserves have escaped unharmed. During the past years, the Japanese military was engaged in a seemingly endless war against China, badly needing oil and other raw materials. Since we halted the trade with Japan, they schemed to seize the oil and mineral-rich East Indies and Southeast Asia. A Japanese attack into the Indies, Malaya, and the Philippines was expected, and plans prepared for it. But obviously, we have not prepared enough for an attack of this magnitude. The attack against Malaya has materialized yesterday, and last night the Japanese forces also attacked Hong Kong, Guam, the Philippines, and Wake Island. This morning, the Japanese continued with an attack on Midway, the Japanese offensive is extending throughout the Pacific, with a submarine force left mostly to itself. We need to act accordingly. For the time being, we will conduct operations as follows. Boats based in Pearl Harbor will patrol in Japanese home waters and also reconnoiter the Marshall Islands, as it's presumed that Japanese forces are massing in that archipelago for a second attack on our bases. Manila-based boats will deploy to guard the vital island of Luzon, against approach by enemy forces. Individual patrol orders will be received from your commander. So, December 9th, 1941. We begin. So, this is a submarine sim, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Obviously, you have your own career, um, but there's also crew management. And already, we have some promotions to give out. And no medals as yet, but we do have some renown with which to hire new people. Let's take a look. Our engine room is full. The control tower. Um, control room is fine. The conning tower is good. Ah, now we do have a space. Hold on. You are a excellent gunner, so why don't you go on the AA gun? You can go into damage control and we'll drop some cash on Glenn Kelso. Oh, he won't join us, but he will. Alan Jenkins is less of a whiny bitch. He will work in the aft torpedo room. We've got space in the forward torpedo room as well, so let's get some ratings. We could bolster the deck watch eventually as well, but for now, Nick Bailey, congratulations, you're in the forward torpedo room. Hook our street. You're in the aft torpedo room, and you and Bud. You guys are the damage control team. Not very effective, but you'll get better. Uh, let's see what our equipment looks like. <clears throat> we have no surface search radar, so 
Hmm, not compatible. Don't have air search radar either, that's unfortunate. I have a 350 cal deck gun on the stern. Um, I prefer a bow mounted, but I can't do that apparently. Can I. No, apparently not. That's all I'm capable of at the moment, and. What torpedoes are we carrying? Mark 14s? Instead of Mark 10s. I believe Mark 14s have a problem with duds. But we shall see. Let's take a look in the options a moment. So, limited fuel, limited O2, limited compressed air, limited battery. Uh, we'll turn on the torpedoes, as frustrating as they are, and realistic sensors. However, I will be leaving on everything else, um, particularly external view, because it's a let's play and you need to see what's going on. Um, and the rest is as realistic as I'm capable of, of doing um, at my current skill level. I don't know who this hunky chap is, but whatever. No medals in the metal case. How about we get to it? So we're departing December the 10th, that's the next day. Patrol off Honshu Island and engage enemy shipping. Our objective is to patrol. And we will start outside the harbour. So how this works is you're not in direct control of everything. You're more sort of... I mean, you can be in control of the guns um, and obviously torpedo targeting, but general operations, you can more sort of bark orders than anything else. And there's a lot of realism here that you've got to take into account, sort of, you know, weather having an effect on your fuel usage. Um, staff can be injured. There's a very detailed damage system for you and the enemy uh, vessels, so you'll sink realistically. Yes. Um, All, stop. All stop. Let's have a look-see. This is us. Yes, sir. Dive plane set for normal dive. No, no, don't dive. Don't dive. Yes, sir. New death. One. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's have a look at her. This is USS Gudgeon. And this is what we look like. Ship spotted, bearing eight two long range. A little bit of rust, but nothing we can't shake off. So, how do we uh, go about this? Well, good question. First things first, let's go to the navigation room. We are here. This is a, a contact. Blue, because it's friendly. And we need to get ourselves... Oh, they're sending us right into the fucking dragon's nest. Well, that's nice of them. So, let's plot a course. Um, I want to be careful to avoid the shallow water as best as possible. Uh, and we will move to midway first. So we can refuel en route, making sure we don't bump into any of these little islands. It's very important to plot a fuel efficient course, of course. A course, of course. Nice. Um, and then from here we'll make a direct hop along to here, Jesus Christ. Um, something we are going to have to watch out for is... Um, How are we going to do this? 
stay in the deep water and we'll decide when we get there. Something we're going to have to watch out for is obviously travelling at the surface um, is more fuel efficient, it's also faster, um, but you are vulnerable. And the map is realistic in size, which means if we left this at real time, it would take. Well, I mean. Tells you right away. It's going to take 11 hours and 30 minutes to reach this point. Um, if we were to run this in real time, it would take. Unknown, because it's so far away. But the navigator's best estimate is it would take 92 hours for us to begin our journey away from Midway. Um, so what you do is you use time compression. And the problem is with time compression, it, it doesn't stop fully. It slows down a bit, but it doesn't stop fully when you detect a threat. So you have to be on the ball, because if you detect something with your air search radar, which we don't have, so we're relying on the deck watch. If you detect a plane, they will torpedo bomb the bollocks off you, and you have to be able to react quickly. Um, same if you pick up any signal, really, on the hydrophone, um, for obvious reasons, you know, uh, enemy merchant shipping, if they see you, will bail, <laughs> and rightfully so. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber, this isn't going to win the war. Let's go ahead two-thirds, uh, while it's relatively flat, and we will return to course. Very good, gentlemen. Very good. Well, let's go to the deck. Very good. Very good. Keep it up. And you, Baldy. Nice work. So, the sea isn't as smooth as it first looked, so we have to. you really have to keep an eye on the weather, because you don't have weather updates coming through to you. Um, other things to remember, you know, you can report back um, and stay in radio contact with other friendly forces. However, sending radio messages from the surface, because you can only do it from the surface, um, it does give away your position. So, you know, it's, it's difficult, because sometimes, you know, you need to send an urgent message to warn of a task force, maybe, or to... Um, report an important kill or a mission objective completion, but you've immediately you're going to have planes on you if you're in the wrong place. So, something to bear in mind. We're going to stay on the surface, back to the navigation room. Actually, let's, uh, let's pop along to the bridge, first of all. Those are some weird fucking eyes you've got there, pal. What are you, what, he's looking at me rather than the map. I'll try not to read too much into that, sailor. We've only just left port. Um, so, yeah, all the stations are manned. Um, if we move this guy to the hydrophone station, that character model will move. And they all have a career, and they all have different stats and abilities that develop as you go along. So, it's important to pay attention to who does a good job and who's incompetent. Um, so you can remove incompetent people from important posts. You, you don't want a sonar guy who's apparently deaf. Down here we have our fuel, battery, compressed air, and CO2 levels. Uh, the first three you want as high as possible, the CO2 level you want as low as possible, and obviously that builds up while you're underwater. Um, the battery runs your engines while underwater, because you can't run a diesel engine uh, while submerged, or at least you shouldn't. Let us go back to the navigation room and crank up the speed a bit. And now the stopwatch appears to show the passage of time and we'll just motor our way along. Uh, I'll turn it down to one third because I bet the weather is quite bad. And um, what have we detected here? Just a friendly ship. Now, it's when you begin making contacts that the real interesting element of the game comes along. Like, you see what's happened there? We no longer have a visual contact, but this is the sonar bearing. 
So the sonar man has detected him. And at the end of this is where we've judged the ship to be. And let's assume this was an enemy ship. We would then begin to... First of all, with the pencil... Plot his course. See, I think he's turned. He has. So, since we began tracking him, he's turned. He's not moving very quickly either. Bad example. But now he's here. And once you've got enough points, you can use the ruler to join the points up, and you have his course. So, let's mark it out that far. And we know, or I know, that our torpedoes have a one nautical mile range. Sorry, point one. No, that's not right. I think it's one nautical mile. It's been a while since I've played this game, you can probably tell. So now we know that we have to, if we were to launch a torpedo attack on him, be somewhere within this circle. And what we ideally want is to be... at a 90 degree angle-ish to his course. Because that means the ship's presenting a side-on profile to you. Um, which obviously presents the biggest target. Then, we would go to the periscope and begin, I mean obviously once we're in position, you would submerge and your technique for that varies depending on um, what kind of ship you're attacking. Um, for example, warships can detect you when you're submerged unless you're below what's called the thermal layer which is uh, very very deep and basically for those ships you have to crash dive below the thermal level allow them to pass over because their detection is primarily forward facing and once your sonar guy is confident that he's passed, they've passed over you rise up behind them and you tend to hit them from behind for the most part if you can get a side on shot that way you're in a good position but particularly the one you're uh, the lead frigate you're the one you're avoiding will pass directly over you um, of close to very frequently and that means you'll be aiming probably with your aft torpedoes at their screws uh, good way to disable them but uh, obviously it doesn't take their teeth out um, <clears throat> between depth charges and the uh, the large caliber guns that they, they bear um, aircraft carriers obviously have a threat of their own because you know they come with reconnaissance and attack aircraft which can and will F you up. Um, merchants can also be armed, so it's always good to decide if you're going to attack submerged with torpedoes or on the surface with your deck gun. You don't want to surface if the uh, the merchant vessel has its own deck gun because damage to you is much more severe than it is to him, um, given that you operate underwater. Anyway, that's enough lessons for now. Let's crank the speed back up get ourselves on the way to Midway. Still doing good on the old fuel. 98 out of 100 left. Um, but that's because we're being fuel efficient. The water is quite um, relatively calm and we're traveling only slowly so we're getting close to maximum fuel efficiency for the present conditions I would hazard a guess. Um, Oh, we've got some pack news. Germany, Germany and Italy declare war on the United States. Declares war back. Japanese forces have been turned back at Wake Island. Now, something to remember, the war will develop around you. And just because we can refuel at Manila now doesn't mean next mission we... Um, Okay, we have a merchant ship closing, bearing 010. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that's friendly. 
given our location it's going to be heading to Pearl Harbor so we'll let it cruise on by oh, I've just turned to port no 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 how far out is it where's my ruler gone there 8.3 nautical miles yeah let's crank the speed up and Yeah, it's friendly. As we suspected, so we'll carry on. But yeah, the war will develop around you, and the success or otherwise of your missions will have an effect on things. You'll also occasionally get sort of emergency orders when the Japanese AI sends out a task force that maybe we weren't prepared for. It doesn't consistently follow historical fact. Um, there is some variation in when things happen, at least in my experience. Maybe I'm wrong, but as far as I can tell at least. So, moving on up the island chain. I'll, in future I'll cut a lot of this stuff out. Um, but this is just to, just to show you essentially what's going on during the off-camera segments. Uh, once we're past midway and we've refueled. Oh, hello. We have a sound contact. Uh, again, I, I'm feeling that's going to be friendly, but you do never know. And sometimes it's just a little Japanese fishing boat, which is annoying because it's not really worth wasting your ammo on, but at the same time, they will often report your position to the Japanese Navy. Um. Let us... No, we'll stay surfaced. It's night. Yeah, they didn't even get in visual range at night, so it's fine whether it was friendly or otherwise. It's kind of immaterial. Some fox traffic. All craft be advised, Japanese invasion of Borneo imminent. Japanese troops have landed on Borneo. It's over here. So they've come down, obviously, past the inside of Taipei. Straight down. Those bastards. Onwards and upwards. So when we get to Midway... We should We should be invited to refuel. Did I not go close enough? Yeah, I know there's a warship. Okay, I'm gonna manually take over and deviate from our course and I'll head in towards midway. There we go, let's refit and return to course. So now we've refueled. It would also replace any torpedoes. Um, obviously refitting is dependent on um, there being supplies in position there. It's an armed trawler, but it's friendly. We stop slowing me down for every contact you hear because we're at home. <clears throat> so obviously, as the war progresses, it can be that you know you don't get fully refitted. Um, I believe again, it's not something I've encountered. Okay, so that's sorted the lag problem out because we're not detecting things every five minutes. Driving my radar guy nuts. Um, it's best to travel on the surface at night anyway because the planes have a hard time seeing you. It's not like you're lit up like a Christmas tree. And we are now entering the area of um, 
to see where it is possible to pick up Japanese merchant shipping on a weird course. So, before I end this video, because I am going to cut the missions into parts because the missions are long, let's just see if we can't pick someone up for you. Okay, we've picked up a ship, apparently. Long range. Where is that ship? Warship moving very fast, moving away. Bearing 098. Well, you've not marked it. Let's see what the news is. Manila under constant air attack. Effective immediate. Uh, see, we've lost Manila. Try and gain some ground overnight. Turn the speed up at night. And there's things like they'll detect the wake, and uh, they'll also detect the wake of your torpedoes. So when you're identifying ships, it's it's good to know from your uh, you've got like a, a guidebook uh, what the draft of the vessel is because how deep it is underwater can mean if you set your torpedoes too deep so they're not spotted and the ship doesn't take evading action, it might not hit any weight because it might be that the, um, the ship is too shallow. Uh, more Fox traffic. I'm guessing that it's Surabaya that's now under attack. Come on, boys. This might be a very quiet first episode, I'm afraid. It might just be that we get to Japanese waters and then I cut it before any of the real meat of the game even happens. Um, what I would like to say is that uh, this game is great. It really is great. Um, it brings out... Uh, it, it scratches that strategic part of your brain. Um, it brings out the tactician in all of us. And I, it's genuinely tense. It's genuinely tense figuring out if enemy ships have detected you, um, then figuring out the best way to get away because you're not equipped to fight them in most cases. It's very very hit and run. If, if that appeals to you, then this is a game you should definitely try. Okay, we've got some task forces marked on our map somewhere, but I haven't seen them. We're getting very close to Japan. Do you think there'd at least be some air patrols? While it's night, let's turn the speed up a bit. Uh, aircraft spotted. We could be in trouble here. Uh, let's go to the deck. Where are you? Oh, this is bad. Uh, let's go to the... Let's man the AA gun. Fire at will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I might do it myself. Firing at will. Yeah, it's attacking us. Where is it? There. You son of a bitch. It didn't hit us, I don't think. But it will report back our position. Are we still going to periscope depth? Yep, slowly but surely. I can hear him. He's coming back for more. Of course, the AI will do this for you if you leave them to it. And depending on their skill, they can be quite good. The water's coming in now, so... Let's see. Uh, 
let's get to the bridge. Okay, well, we survived our first encounter um, with the enemy there. We'll stay at periscope depth, one third engine speed. And we'll just keep an eye. We'll stay underwater during the day, I think it's probably the best thing to do. It's going to drain our batteries to buggery, of course, because he found us early in the morning. Come on. Bloody sun, go down. Okay. Here we go, this is the action we were hoping for. Good job, we're already at periscope depth. It's closing, it's been reporting. It's been, it's had a report relayed to it from that aircraft. And we've been stupid enough to stay on the same course. It's 10 nautical miles out. Nothing to worry about right now, but... We will stop. Um, he can and will ping us if we're not below the thermal layer, but I just want to plot him out a little bit. That mark was a load of shit. So, what's... Where are you headed? Somewhere like this. So he's going to come down here. If we reverse, we might be able to hit him with our torpedoes. Uh, let's, let's get down... Let's get down under the thermal layer. Oh, why is... Oh god, there's a few of them. Um, why is... Okay. We might have bitten off more than we can chew here. Uh, if I die on this, I will restart the career properly, because I was just desperate to show you. Um, let's return to course, please, boys. Um, I was just desperate to show you some uh, Silent Hunter action. Are we deep enough? Have we passed the thermal layer? We have not. We need to go deeper. I don't know what our maximum depth is. They're too fast for us. I'm so bad at this game. They're too fast for us. Yeah, they're still three miles out. Okay, well, the good news is they're probably not going to catch us, so... Why don't we... Why don't we return to course? Not there. Not there. Uh, just yes. put it at one third. Are they coming for me? No, they're passing by. Um. Ah, okay. I think it's safe now for us to surface because we need to recharge our batteries. Ok, 
Okay, we're getting very, very close to Japan. Not much has happened. I've not cut the video in any way, which I should have done. Um, so I'm very sorry for that, but join me next time for some interesting and tense action. Uh, I literally guarantee it. Thanks again.